If you're interested in formulating silky hair conditioners, rich hair masks, packaging free conditioner bars, and creamy lotions that leave your skin feeling divine, then you need to know about BTMS 25. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are getting acquainted with BTMS 25. In today's video, we will be covering what BTMS 25 is, why we use it in our formulations, how to use it in our formulations, substitution suggestions, and then we will wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using this awesome ingredient. As always, please think of these ingredient deep dives as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on the same ingredient. So if you are looking for a quick written reference, I have linked to it in the description box below. What is BTMS 25? It is a cationic or positively charged emulsifying and conditioning ingredient. It is made of a blend of 75% satiral alcohol and 25% behentramonium methyl sulfate. That's what the BTMS stands for. The 25 in the name refers to that 25% content of BTMS. You may also see this referred to as being 25% active. There are blends of cetyryl alcohol and behentramonium methyl sulfate that are 50-50, so the inky doesn't tell the whole story in this case. Make sure you are looking at the name of the product and reading the description so you know what those ratios are. Cetyryl alcohol is a moisturizing fatty alcohol that is made of a blend of cetyl and stearyl alcohols. It provides thickening, stabilizing, and emollient properties to formulations made with it. Behentramonium methyl sulfate is a quaternary ammonium conditioning agent. Its key contributions to our formulations is its gorgeous, conditioning, rich loveliness, but it does also emulsify. It leaves skin and hair feeling amazing, silky, soft, and more substantial. It really shines in hair care where it helps reduce tangles, improve comb through, and generally leaves the hair feeling delightful. There are other ingredients that contain behentramonium methyl sulfate blended with other ingredients. BTMS 50 is the most common one and we will touch on that in the substitution section later on. Between the cetyryl alcohol and the behentramonium methyl sulfate, BTMS both thickens and emulsifies our formulations while adding conditioning emollient goodness. It is usually sold as small white pellets, much like many of the other ingredients I've talked about in these ingredient deep dives, so make sure you are paying attention and reading your labels when you're formulating so you don't accidentally grab the wrong thing. Like many other cationic ingredients, BTMS 25 can have a kind of fishy scent to it which can vary in strength from batch to batch and supplier to supplier. Usage rates are usually low enough that you won't get a fishy whiff in your final product but depending on how sensitive your nose is and how high the concentration is and how smelly your batch is, you might. Why do we use BTMS 25 in our formulations? BTMS 25 is used in formulations primarily for its conditioning goodness, but its emulsifying, thickening, and emollient properties are also important. It's just that you can get those emulsifying, thickening, emollient properties from non-ionic emulsifying waxes. So it's really that conditioning goodness that sets BTMS 25 apart from something like emulsifying wax NF. Our skin and hair are negatively charged, and since opposites attract, ingredients that are positively charged or cationic, like BTMS 25, are rather special. Cationic ingredients create a very, very thin film on the skin and hair that leaves it feeling superb. Because of the charge attraction, cationic products cling to and stay on our skin and hair far longer than anionic and non-ionic products resisting wash off and wear. Don't worry about this wash off resistant coating functioning as some sort of semi-permanent varnish on your hair and skin though. Cationic ingredients wash out with shampooing and in skincare products I find I notice them for perhaps a couple hours longer than I might notice a non-ionic or anionic formulation. They're wear resistant compared to not cationic cosmetics, not compared to something like nail polish. I find it's hard to describe just how gorgeous BTMS 25 formulations feel on the skin and the hair, but if you think about, you know, you're in the shower, you've just shampooed your hair, and then you add conditioner, and suddenly your hair just feels so much like thicker and more slippery, and it's easy to comb through, and it just feels a lot more sort of substantial, all of that is cationic conditioning goodness. BTMS 25 can be used in emulsified and anhydrous formulations in both skincare and hair care. It really shines in hair formulations, leave-in conditioner and rinse-off conditioners, solid conditioner bars, hair bombs, hair masks, and more. It leaves the hair feeling richly conditioned, smoother, easier to comb, really just silky, it's lovely. BTMS 25 is also gorgeous in skincare formulations where it has a really powdery, luxurious, quite expensive 
feeling skin feel that's hard to describe, but I think you'll love it. I really like using it as the emulsifier in creams and lotions, but it also brings its special wonderfulness to anhydrous formulations. Because BTMS 25 is an emulsifier, it will also add self-emulsifying and rinse-off properties to formulations like body scrubs and cleansing balms. However, BTMS 25 is about twice the price of emulsifying wax NF, so I don't usually use BTMS 25 to add rinse-off to a formulation unless I also want to add conditioning. Learn more about emulsifying wax NF with the deep dive I recently shared on it. How do you work with BTMS 25? Well, for starters, it is solid, so in order to do anything with it, you will need to melt it. It melts around 60 degrees Celsius or about 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but like all cationic emulsifiers I've worked with, I find that it's really quite stubborn to melt. Thankfully, you can make BTMS 25 a heck of a lot easier to melt by running it through your DIY-only coffee grinder. Make sure you're wearing your dust mask for this and be relatively quick about it. If you do a big, long, extended grind, that friction will heat the BTMS 25 up, kind of laminate it to the inside of your coffee grinder, and that's a pain in the backside to clean up. The resulting powdered BTMS 25 melts a heck of a lot easier than the larger pellety stuff does. BTMS 25 is typically recommended at about 2 to 10% for emulsions. Like emulsifying wax NF, it works to emulsify when used at about 25% of the oil phase. But unlike an emulsifying wax, like emulsifying wax NF, we don't determine the usage of BTMS 25 purely on what is needed to emulsify. When formulating hair products, it's often used at a higher ratio than strictly required because we want that conditioning goodness. Just how much you'll want to use will depend a lot on precisely what you're making, probably less for a leave-in hair conditioner and more for a hair mask, and your hair if you're formulating for very fine hair that's easily weighed down, you may wish to use less BTMS 25 than if you are formulating for thicker or drier hair that could use a lot of conditioning. I've prepared six different samples using BTMS 25. So these first three are just BTMS 25 water and a preservative. 4%, 8% and 10%. The following three samples use those same concentrations of BTMS 25, but then I've also included twice as much liquid oil as BTMS 25. So this one is 4% BTMS 25, 8% oil, and then 8% and 16%, and then 10% and 20%. You can see that the higher concentration of oily things, the thicker the formulation gets. You can also see that the versions with just BTMS 25 have a bit of a gel translucent look to them, while the versions with oil are a lot more opaque and creamy. If you're making a solid hair conditioner bar using BTMS 25, you'll use a lot more than that 2 to 10% range. I found a sample hair conditioner formulation from Dow that used 60% BTMS 25. Because BTMS 25 is cation, or positively charged, it doesn't always play nicely with ingredients that are anionic or negatively charged. It is also more sensitive to electrolytes than non-ionic emulsifiers. So if you are having issues with your BTMS 25 emulsion splitting, go through your formulation and look for a high electrolyte load and or some anionic ingredients and then work to reduce or eliminate those and you should get a nice stable emulsion. What can you use instead of BTMS 25? Generally speaking, you are looking for something that is both conditioning, cationic, and emulsifies. If you can can find pure behentramonium methyl sulfate, you can make your own blend with cetyryl alcohol, 25% behentramonium methyl sulfate, 75% cetyryl alcohol, and you're off to the races. BTMS 50 can also be a good alternative. Remember that BTMS 50 is 50% behentramonium methyl sulfate, while BTMS 25 is just 25% behentramonium methyl sulfate, and so BTMS 25 is twice as concentrated. If you want to keep the amount of active ingredient in the formulation the same, you want to use half as much BTMS 25 and replace that missing amount with some cetyryl alcohol. If you would like to boost the conditioning properties of your formulation, you can make a one-to-one -one swap, though do remember that this will result in a slightly softer or thinner formulation because BTMS 50 doesn't contain as much thickening ingredients as BTMS 25 does. If you are shopping for a BTMS and you can choose between 25 and 50 and you only want to buy one, I would buy 50 simply because it's more concentratedness makes it more flexible. Behentramonium chloride can also work as an alternative for BTMS 25. BTMC is a different but also very lovely and potent conditioning emulsifier. I've heard from some of my curly haired readers that they really prefer behentramonium chloride to behentramonium methyl sulfate. If you are making the swap, make sure you are reading the product description description and looking at the inky of what you've got because sometimes BTMC is blended with stabilizers like cetyryl alcohol and sometimes it's not. You can purchase BTMC 25, which is basically the same thing as BTMS 25, just with, you know, BTMC instead of BTMS. So that could be an easy one-to-one -one swap. If your BTMC doesn't contain any thickeners like cetyryl alcohol, it won't thicken your formulations at all and it's also going to be a lot more potent than BTMS 25. The BTMC that I have is from Making Cosmetics and it's about 80% active. So 
if a formulation called for 4% BTMS25, I'd probably use about one and a quarter percent BTMC and then make up the remainder of that 4% with cetyryl alcohol. It's also worth noting that in my experience, BTMC can smell a lot more fishy than BTMS. When it comes to natural alternatives, I haven't tried a lot of them. Of the two that I have tried, I wouldn't really recommend either of them. Very Soft EQ65 is okay, while I really, really strongly disliked Emulsense HC. There are more natural cationic emulsifiers coming onto the market all the time though, so, you know, do some research, search around, order a small amount, try it, see what you think. In some situations, you could use a non-ionic emulsifying wax, like Emulsifying Wax NF, instead of BTMS25, but you'll lose that conditioning element. So think about what you're making and how important that conditioning element is to the formulation. You could also try adding that conditioning element back in using a separate conditioning ingredient, something like polyquaternium 7 or cationic guar gum. This will definitely require some retesting and some development work though. And let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using BTMS 25. Formulation number one is my super simple creamy hair conditioner with BTMS 25 made three ways. This is a great place to start if you've never made hair conditioner before. We make three different conditioners that build on one another so you can start to understand how BTMS 25 works and why it is so wonderful. And the first formulation requires just three ingredients. Formulation number two is my frosted cranberry butter bomb. If you find you often like the idea idea of body butter more than the reality of it, try this conditioning butter balm. It's creamy and silky with a gorgeous dry touch finish that's surprisingly powdery in a good way, thanks to the inclusion of BTMS 25. This also makes a great solid hair balm. Formulation number three is my strawberry kiwi cleansing conditioner. If you love cleansing conditioners but haven't made your own yet, I highly recommend it. Cleansing conditioners are a wonderful way to gently cleanse your hair, but they can get really expensive, especially if you've got long hair because you need so much product for every hair wash. Thankfully, they are pretty darn inexpensive to make. This one features strawberry hydrosol and kiwi oil. The conditioning goodness comes from BTMS 25, of course, and a small amount of amphoteric surfactant gives this formulation its cleansing power. Formulation number four is my passion fruit coconut solid conditioner bar. This formulation was inspired by the Dow formulation that I mentioned earlier in the video. It is a super long lasting solid conditioner bar featuring luxurious passion fruit oil and hair penetrating coconut oil. It does call for quite a lot of BTMS 25, but a 50 gram bar will probably last a single person close to a year. And our last formulation is my midwinter conditioning beard balm. This is basically a concentrated anhydrous leave-in hair conditioner. I designed it for beards and named it for beards, but you could definitely use it for your hair as well. You can apply a small amount straight to the hair, or you can work up a wee bit in your palm with a bit of water to create an instant cream conditioner. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please remember to check out the full partner encyclopedia entry linked in the description box below this video. If you'd like to learn how to make that beautiful conditioner bar I mentioned a few moments ago, please click here. And if you'd like to learn more about emulsifying wax NF, please click here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.